Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to do a little dashboard deconstruction in Excel today. I'm going to show you how this cool little template behind me is built, all the little tips and tricks that go into building it. And we're really going to focus here on just how straightforward a lot of these features are. We're just getting a little creative. Nothing complex here. There's no uh, complex formulas. There's no custom coding, nothing like that. Uh, we're just keeping it simple. Even beginners will be able to do this. Uh, and again, a lot of these features, I know I always say it, but they work really the same way as PowerPoint. We're just never taught how to do this in Excel. So that's what we're going to show you today. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in and we're going to start with these cool background kind of styled shapes you see here. These backgrounds are made up of three rounded rectangles. Many things that you see in these types of templates are just made up of rounded rectangles. I've got a little mask on top. This is like a gradient mask to block out the background. I've got a cool little pattern in one and then I've got just a base rectangle. So under the insert tab in Excel we can drop in rounded rectangles. It's one of the options here. You can control how rounded they are in the upper left, give them a fill color, in this case a slightly lighter version of our background color, and in this case I think we also gave it a little bit of a drop shadow. That's in the formatting tab here on the right. Now on top of that we've got a fun little pattern. So how you do this is you just drop in a rounded rectangle, then for the fill, you select picture or texture fill, find a texture you like online, you can Google it if you want, uh, and you can insert it here and it'll drop in as a repeating pattern like this. I've turned the transparency to like 75% so it's not too bright, and we've got this pretty little pattern in the background. Now, last but not least, I want our text to be readable on top, so I put in a third rectangle, this one with a gradient, and that gradient is just a uh, the background gray color, same color, to a fully transparent version of that gray color. And that just gives us a nice little subtle gradient that lets us read our text and see the little logo we have here. Uh, one little bonus tip, under the insert tab in Excel there's an icons option. That icons option has a bunch of free little icons you can use. I didn't want to design a new logo for this little sample template so I just dropped in an icon for it and added some text next to it. Okay, uh, if you drop layers in you need to move them forward or back. You can just click on any object, hit right click, you'll have bring to front, send to back, we also have a shape format tab that has a bunch of options here to reorder your objects or to align them and do all that sort of stuff. The next one that people always ask about, they say, hey Josh, how are you getting text that's moving around and not in a cell? That's not how Excel works, right? <laughs> and it's actually really simple. We've just dropped in a text box. Under the insert tab, you'll see a text box option up here. And when you click into your text box, you don't have to type a value. All you go do is go up to the formula bar, hit equals, and then you can point it at any cell in your worksheet, and it will update according to the data in that cell. And this gives us way more flexibility to move our text around, style it, put it where we want to put it. Uh, if we just use the cell grid layout, we're really stuck with this kind of boring style of Excel data that you imagine when you think of Excel. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. It can be really effective in a lot of situations, but sometimes we want a little more, we want to get a little fancy, we want to make something pretty, and this is what enables us to do that. Um, one other little tip here, people often ask me, hey Josh, how do you do a trend line like this in Excel? Excel doesn't have a trend line chart built in. And really all we have here is a standard line chart. So if you go to insert, you go to line chart and drop in a line chart. At first, it's probably going to look something like this, right? Kind of, kind of busy, a lot of labeling. And if you want to turn it into a trend line instead of a regular line chart, you're going to just go in, you're going to delete your y-axis, delete your x-axis, delete your uh, grid lines in the background, and then with the whole chart selected, you go over to your formatting pane, you hit no fill, no line, that gets rid of our background and the outline around it, and then we can just turn our, uh, our actual line of our trend line to whatever color we want. Uh, in this case, you know, white or something like that, and we'll update our marker, our marker being the little dots, to be, uh, let's say, white as well in this case. Uh, before you know it, we've got ourselves a little trend line. We can fit in wherever we want. Now, be cautious using trend lines. They don't communicate a lot of information because they're not labeled properly, right? 
they do serve a purpose. They can show general direction. They can show general variability, that sort of thing. Okay, and then last but not least, this cool horizontal bar chart. People just always ask me about how to get this gradient effect in their bar charts. Uh, it's not hard at all. We've just got a standard bar chart here. Under the Insert tab, under Bars, you'll see horizontal bar options here. So we just dropped those in. We've clicked into our actual bars, gone to the formatting tab, and used a gradient fill. That's what you see right here. And my gradient consists of three colors. It is a bright white, and then very close to that, a bright yellow, and then on the very far end, a fully transparent version of any of those colors, just fully transparent. And it has to be at 180 degrees if it's a horizontal bar, because that's the direction of the gradient. So 180 degrees mean your, means your gradient just goes straight from left to right or right to left in this case. And that gives us this cool little effect where we have a gradient fill with a nice little cap at the top. Uh, fun little trick. I just like it. I think it makes the bar charts a little more interesting and it doesn't take anything away from interpreting them. You can apply this in all sorts of cool, crazy ways. I mean, right, we showed this cool alien dashboard the other day. Uh, I show, I've shown this geo dash many, many times across uh, lots of different videos. One thing I have to add here, though, this is an important disclaimer. You need to know your audience. If, if you're walking into a corporate meeting with a bunch of data analysts, you don't want to show them something like this. They're not going to like it. They're going to be very, very unhappy with it. They want data that looks like this. Um, if you are going into a meeting with general stakeholders, just people in general in your company, and you're trying to get them excited about data, engaged with data, and just present something that they want to show off, then this could be a really good option and a really great way to make your work stand out. And that's really what I'm trying to tell people here is you don't have to go over the top like I do here, right? That's not necessary. But knowing that you have some of these options available lets you use visualization and design principles in the most effective way whenever there's an opportunity to use them. So just knowing they're there can go really, really far. Uh, I think I'm going to be sending out this and some of the other cool little visual design things I've been posting lately uh, on the newsletter at some point. If you want that, you can hop over to my profile. Uh, I, I have all the info there for that. Uh, I hope that's helpful, everyone. If you have questions, comments, let me know. Uh, I hope this was, you know, I hope this, you know, helped give you some insight. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I will be back soon with more. Bye for now.